<sighs> That's not good. That's rounded off. Oh, oh god damn. That's not good. Please work, please work, please work. Positive vibes, people, positive vibes. <sighs> oh, no. Can I ask a question? Are you sure you weren't tightening it? I just put a chip in the chisel. Y'all, we have a problem. Another one. Today's the, oops. Not, not the fifth. fifth. It's, not it's the, the fifth. eighth, unfortunately. The eighth Today's the eighth day of working on our new project. Which is the restoration of the fuel tank of our 1965 Clark Cortez motorhome. And Andy has primarily done this by himself because he's had off and I've had to work and I'm not impressed. To be fair, neither am I. Like, from now on, I think that you should be monitored on all jobs that you're doing. Adult supervision is required, yes. <laughs> I mean, like seriously, and it might sound mean, but to be honest, we've had so many issues. None of which were my fault. And? No, not my fault. Anyway, let's go back to the beginning when I first dropped the fuel tank from the Cortez. Now we've got that bracket out of the way, we can look to start dropping the fuel. This is the drain plug for the fuel tank. It looks super rusty and I'm really nervous it's just gonna round off, but let's give it a try. <sighs> That's not good. That's rounded off. I guess we'll have to do this the hard way and drop the fuel tank while it's still full of gas. Bugger. I've got the jack under it with a bit of wood just to help support it so that when I undo the two bolts, it doesn't fall on me and crush my face. Okay, that's one loose. And that's the second one. This thing is heavy, especially because it's full of petrol stuff. I've just taken the screws out for the fuel level sender and I'm hoping, oh, comes out in one piece. Oh. The reason why the fuel level sender might not have been working if the wiring wasn't broke is that the floats fell off the end. So that explains that. Just be careful when messing with your fuel tanks, especially metal ones, because obviously any spark will ignite the gas and that's not cool. So just use a bit of common sense. If you blow yourself up, it's not my fault. I also thought I'd just remove the outlet as well, seeing as we're gonna get a new one. Then I cleaned the tank. The first job we're gonna do is put another load of the cleaner and degreaser inside the tank with some hot water. I've already got my water boiled here. Oh, there's definitely more stuff moving around in here as well. So now I just need to rinse out the tank before putting the metal prep in. The metal prep's been in the tank for about two or three hours now. I've just been rotating it and making sure that it coats everywhere within the, the tank itself. Now we're gonna drain it, we need to rinse it out. So some of these steps may seem counterintuitive, as in like you've gone to all this effort to get rid of the rust and degrease it, and then you just keep filling it back up with water. But these are just the steps that Pour 15 recommend. You've gotta get it cleaned out inside so that when you put the sealer in, it's just got a uh, bare dry metal to attach to. and. If there is some flash surface rust there, it's not an issue. The coating will cover it. After that, I treated, then painted the tank to prevent it rusting. Always remember with this stuff, it's quite dangerous, especially this. There is 
phosphoric acid in this. You don't really want it on your body. Goggles, safety mask. This might be a bit overkill, but it's better safe than sorry. So let's get to it. So all in all the tank looks pretty good, um, I am just going to get a quick hose down with the hose pipe again, obviously that will fly for us again, but before I paint it I'm going to go over it with another abrasive pad um, and a degreaser just to make sure it's all clean. The reason why I'm going to rinse it out now is because obviously I need to shake the tank around and I don't want to get all that acid on my hands. Okay let's get it flipped over. I'm just going to give this top area a scuff over with a scotch bright pad and give it a good clean down with some panel wipe and then I'm actually going to put a coat of bed liner on it tonight. Then I coated the inside of the tank. So just to make things a bit easier, I've just cut, an, cut up an old water bottle just to act as a bit of a funnel. Tissues for when I inevitably spill it. My goggles on, in case there's any splash. And make sure you get all of it in there. And now we just spill the tank round. just rotating it uh, just for every half an hour or so just for an hour or two just to make sure that we don't get any deep puddles and it don't block anything in particular and also just to make sure that any remaining bits that didn't get coated will get coated next I installed a new fuel level sender so this is what you get in your kit you've got your float you've got your sender unit I have gasket and five bolts to secure it to your tank now you only need a couple of other items to install this. You need a screwdriver, you need a flathead and a Phillips, you need a tape measure, and either a set of snips, or if you're not strong enough like me, an angle grinder. Before you can install your fuel level sender, you need to know how deep your tank is. So take your tape measure, drop it to the bottom, make sure it's straight, and then measure the distance. So that is 165 millimeters or six and a half inches. You refer to the table that's included in the instructions to measure your tank. The way that the fuel level sender is designed, it's really clever. You've just got these screws that hold the sections together. So to get the right stem length, you just unscrew the bits you don't need and then adjust this bottom section, move it up and then tighten everything back in. 
unravel your wire. Remove the section you don't need. Once you've got your wire re-wrapped, just have a look at roughly where the um, center of the arm pivot is against the body. Mine needs to be 84, so that's to there. But it looks like if I put that in there like that, get that level, that's gonna be pretty much spot on. So now what I need to do is put the screws back in. Once this is tightened up, just drop it into the fuel tank to make sure that it lines up okay and you're happy with the position. Now, the holes on here are offset at different angles. So you just need to keep adjusting the level center until you get it in the right orientation. Make things easier in the future again. Get your trusty blue tip, rip it into two pieces and just put one piece down like that and then time your holes together and your rough position and then mark it on your level sender. Now you know that when you drop this back in, its orientation is correct. You can also then see as well which way that the arm is pointing outwards. The next thing we need to do is cut the float arm. Now, this stuff, let me tell you, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's really hard to cut. I've tried already, and to be honest, I've embarrassed myself because I can't get through it. Remember though, when, before you cut it, you need excess because it needs to fit inside here. So I'm probably gonna make this about 80, 90 mil. Now it seems ridiculously short, but this is what auto gauge says it needs to be. Now that everything's assembled, I just need to do a test fit just to make sure that the float isn't touching the bottom. Obviously, if it is touching the bottom, the tank can get completely em empty of petrol. And if you run out of petrol, it's a long walk to a gas station. It's an even longer walk back when you're carrying a can of petrol as well. So what you want is your fuel level sender float to always be just off the bottom. That means even when the gauge reads completely empty, you've got a bit of gas left in the bottom just to help you get that bit further to the gas station. Because don't lie to me, I know you drive with the fuel light on and the needle touching the empty line. I know you do it because I do it. So let's just give it a quick test and double check. Yep, and we're good. So I'm gonna pull it out, fit the gasket, fit the fuel level sender, and then we're gonna wire it up. Now the gasket is timed with the holes as well, so you've got to make sure you put it in the right orientation. Drop your fuel level sender in the hole. Make sure all the wire's clear. Keep everything lined up as neat as possible. And now you simply secure everything down. That's the fuel level sender installed. Obviously it needs wiring up, but we need the Cortez in here to do that. When I installed the tank is when the problem started. After installing the tank, a fuel fitting sheared. I've already gone ahead and bent a pipe to go into the fuel tank. So I'm just gonna screw that in now. Oh, that didn't feel good. That's not good. That is really not good. Damn. Please come out. Please don't tell me after all this, I've got to drop the tank to get this out. Then L came out to help and we tried to use an extractor in the fitting, but that broke, making things a whole lot worse. It's still not my fault. Oh 
Come on. <sighs> oh, no. Don't tell me that just broke in there. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Are you sure you weren't tightening it? Yes. That's when we decided to take the fuel tank out and had to take on some drastic measures. And more drastic measures and <laughs> more drastic measures. Yeah. Nope. 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 Need to get more of the brass out around it. That just put a chip in the chisel. That's disappointing. It's not even turning at all, is it? The fit in itself is only this deep. Like, what's that? 10 mil, if that. So, the carbide piece that's stuck in can't be that much further in, to be fair. So, my plan was to, if we could nibble out as much as the brass, we should just be able to knock the carbide piece out. So we have our holes. Yep, I still don't think it's gonna come out, but can at least make a try. And there the little jerk is. So again, this is the eighth day of working on this and honestly, truly, genuinely, this is like the last attempt on this fuel tank. So what are we doing? Today we are going to try and re-drill and tap a new fitting into the fuel tank using this tap and this fitting. And hopefully it works. That's not gonna work. Why? Because it's too big and I don't know if we can get something that fits in between those two sizes. What are our options? Uh, I guess the most serious one would be to have a new fuel tank made, drill and tap two new fittings on the side, weld us in a new section for the drain plug. What about like finding another fitting? Sell it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's, a, that's actually a pretty good option right now. That's a preferred option right now. <laughs>